Revelations chapter 21, the reading of the text beginning with verse 22 and reading to the end of the chapter. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to talk about a choice city for chosen citizens. A choice city for chosen citizens. <clears throat> I don't think there's any difficulty in appreciating that this final paragraph in chapter 21 here in the book of the Revelations is a description of the splendor within the holy city, New Jerusalem, which came down from God out of heaven. It's, it's not like uh, Kansas City, nor Dallas. It, it does not have the uh, problems that beset the congregating of men today in urban communities. The new Jerusalem has distinctive and unique splendor that is described here in this concluding paragraph. I told you about my friend W.T. Adams of San Francisco who says I've got to go to heaven. And uh, because I also have made up my mind, I'm going to heaven. And because I believe that many of you have decided you are going to heaven. Since this is the permanent place of abode toward which we aspire, it would seem to me profitable that we anticipate the perfection of that place and our adaptation to it. As a matter of fact, a matter of fact it would be the part of wisdom to, to begin to practice the ways of the New Jerusalem since, since that's where we plan to spend eternity. Uh, one who expects to move from one city to another uh, would be wise to try to find out all you can about that city before you make the move. I mean, you know, you could write the Chamber of Commerce and you could inquire about the schools and you could know what the economic opportunities are. You wouldn't want to wait to get there. Uh, to find out about where you're going to be living. Uh, in my travels, when I'm going to a country where a different language is spoken, if it's one of the two that I've had some little introduction to, French or Spanish, I always pull out my textbooks and brush up uh, on the language. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to Haiti and I know they speak French there, then I brush up on my little knowledge of French. It ain't much, but, you know, at least I could say uh, good morning, you know. And, and so I brush up on the language so that I can do at least the elementary things of greeting folk or saying thank you. 
uh, because I'm going to be there for a few days or for a week and I've got to live with them and I, I want to know their language and understand their practice. Uh, since, since this new Jerusalem is, is where we plan to spend eternity, I would think it would be wise for us to try to find out all we can about it that we may even begin to practice its ways. But now, before we, before we look at the text closely, let me remind us that the book of Revelations is apocalypse. And as such, we may not expect literalism to prevail. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all because the Holy Spirit gives us what we need for salvation. There's a whole lot, there's a whole lot about the book <clears throat> that I don't understand. But that's not a great statement to make. There's a whole lot of other things I don't understand. You know, I flip on my television set and see things happening around the globe simultaneous to my seeing or my seeing simultaneous to its occurrence. I don't really understand how that happens. No, no, I mean, I've got right there in my living room, I've got right there the images that, that are exactly what's happening somewhere else. No, I, I, don't, I don't really understand all of that. All right. uh, I've had uh, laser surgery where the doctors can, with a light beam, do surgery in in internal parts of the body you know i don't really understand that i know, i hear what they say you know but but i don't really understand it but that doesn't keep me from flipping on my television or or enjoying the benefits of laser surgery the whole lot of things i don't fully understand and so i don't understand all about the book but i understand enough for salvation. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's, that's what really matters. Yeah. Now, now come with me if you will. Well, well. And let's, uh, let's walk around the text. Examine it to see, see what it says. Yeah. Yeah. The first place it says that, that there is no temple All right. in the city. There is no temple in the city. Right. Uh, anybody who is familiar with uh, Hebrew culture and law know that wherever there was any aggregate of Hebrew males, right. there was of necessity a worship place. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you got 14 males together, yeah. then there would be a synagogue. Yeah. And of course, Jerusalem, the site of the temple, was just the elaborate synagogue yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so to say that in the new jerusalem yeah. there is no temple right. that's a that's an extraordinary statement yeah. you know that that's an unusual statement how can it be that in the heavenly city yeah. where all the saints are gathered yeah. there is no temple yeah. but that's what the book says that that in this city there is no temple for the almighty God and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now I ought to, I ought to hasten to say that, that rather than meaning that there is no worship there, it means that there is worship everywhere. You don't have to go to the temple to worship. You don't need to find the corner where the Metropolitan Building stands. You, you don't need to go looking for a holy place that has been consecrated for worship. For any corner will do in the New Jerusalem to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Any corner is a worship place. Amen. There is no temple there because there is no need for a stipulated worship place. Right. 
uh, saints worship God everywhere. Yeah. Angels are bowing down on every corner. Yeah. Choruses are crying holy yeah. everywhere you turn. Yeah. Lord God of hosts, yeah. the whole earth yeah. is full of his glory. There is no temple there. Yeah. In the old Jerusalem, the temple was the place of daily sacrifice for sin. Yeah. You remember that. Yeah. I mean, the law, the, the whole covenant law was built around relationships of the people with God. Yeah. And because people were sinners and sinning daily, yeah. there had to be something done about it yeah. daily. Yeah. And the thing that was done about it daily was the priest yeah. was to offer on the altar yeah. a sacrifice for sin. Yeah. Every day yeah. there needed to be a sacrifice for sin. Yeah. But oh, my brothers and sisters, right. in the new Jerusalem, there is no temple for we don't need any daily sacrifice for sin for Jesus has already made the offering once for all. Amen. Amen. There need not be any daily sacrifice. For he, once for all, has made that sacrifice. Amen. And so thank God we are already free from the penalty of sin. Isn't that good news? I mean, we're not, we're not trying. Uh -huh. It isn't that we are hoping. All right. It isn't that we're doing the best we can. All right. If we name the name of Jesus yeah. as Lord already, I pass from death unto life. Yeah. I've already been freed yeah. from the penalty of sin. Yeah. And thanks be unto God, wow. we are being saved yeah. from the power of sin and hallelujah there's gonna come a day when we will be saved from the presence of sin isn't that good news we're saved already from the penalty of sin we are being saved from the power of sin and we will be saved from the presence of sin there is no temple there. In the old Jerusalem, temple worship was segregated. You remember that Gentiles could not, in fact, go beyond the outer court. Amen. Like that treasurer from Ethiopia who came up to worship. He couldn't go inside the temple. They had an outer court, yeah. a yard, a courtyard, yeah. that was called the court of the Gentiles. Well, and that was as far as he could go. Well, yeah. Now the immediate court inside the temple well, was the court of the women. Yeah. Well, and the women could go in the inner court, yeah. Yeah. but no further. no further. And of course the male Hebrews right. who had been circumcised... Yeah could go to that court that was beyond the women's court right. going toward the center of the temple right. and then you remember right. that the priest yeah. went up before the great altar yeah. that was even beyond the court yeah. where the males went yeah. but then there was the inner sanctum yeah. the holy of holies yeah. where only the high priest yeah. could go and so worship was segregated yeah. in the temple in the old Jerusalem. Yeah. The Gentiles out here and yeah. the women here and the male Jews there yeah. and the priests yonder yeah. and the high priest in there. Yeah. But oh, thank God, yeah. in the new Jerusalem, all the nations of the earth yeah. shall walk therein. Yeah. Everybody will be able to make their way into this 